Okay guys, welcome back. This is the first video you will see that will teach you how to use Inventor to make a part. Now remember, a part is just a single piece of material, cannot be taken apart, and it's usually part of an assembly, which is multiple parts that fit together to make a product. So, uh, that's what I'm going to make actually, is this outside of the box. First thing I do is I open up Inventor, as you can see, and I go to Projects. You have to start by going to Projects every time. Uh, last time I used Inventor, it looks like I was working on a PVC boat project. And I'm going to come down here and double-click on my box project. You will probably open Inventor into somebody else's box project every day because last period somebody was using that computer. If that happens, you've got to set your project correctly or you will start messing with somebody else's work. You don't want to go there. All right, so I have a little checkbox by my stuff. That means it is on that project. I hit done. And now here's how you guys get started. You go to new, standard IPT, We'll be using all of these later, but we're starting with standard IPT. Notice here, project file, Wilson James. Sweet, I'm in my project file, and I hit create. Sometimes Inventor will take a long time to open up the part files at first. Just be patient. And here I am in a limitless three-dimensional space. I can't click on anything so I need to figure out where I'm at. If you click 2D Sketch over here, not 3D Sketch, make sure it's a 2D Sketch, I have what are known as work planes. I can grab this and rotate around, and I can see that I have three work planes. If you hit F6, it brings you back to your home view, if you hit and hold F4, I can rotate. So F4 allows me to rotate. F6 brings me back to the beginning. The rolly button on the mouse zooms in and out. That's useful. And holding the rolly button allows me to pan, which moves things up and down, left and right. All right. So now we know that, we go to 2D Sketch. We click the XY plane, and now I'm on a two-dimensional workspace in that big 3D space. And if I'm going to make this part here, this is a square that's thick. So we could call that a rectangular prism. Um, but the first thing I need to do is draw that square. I'm going to get a line. I'm going to start from this point here. If you look at the numbers by my mouse, that is zero, 00. That's known as the world origin. It's the center of the universe. I'm going to click there, and I'm going to go up. And if you see that blue line, um, or the blue uh, letters, numbers, I'm only about an inch and a half long. That's fine. I'm going to start there. I'm going to go straight across. You'll feel that the mouse will sort of lock at 90 degrees. I'm going to go about an inch and a half. Down. Again, keep it straight up and down. And I'm lining it up with the world origin here. So I end up with, if I click here, and I come back here, I have a square. But it's a little square. So I'm going to go to dimension. And I'm going to set the dimensions properly. So there's a lot of ways to use the dimension tool. If I dimension this line and I click on it, go ahead. And I come over here and I click again. I've just placed a dimension that says that the height of this box is about one and a half inches. I'm going to change that to eight. Zoom out a little bit with the rolly button. And I have an eight inch tall box shape rectangle. Now I'm going to use dimension and I'm going to say I want a dimension between this line and this line. I didn't click yet so it's trying to make another dimension from there to there. 
Do you see how I have height and width? A lot like the multi-view dimension we've done in the past. I'm going to go ahead and make that 8. And there we go. Your box must be purple. If you have lines in this color, that means you messed up. Watch the video again. See what you did wrong. Try it again. You can click on something and hit delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. That might help you solve problems. Purple means fully constrained. Fully constrained is a good thing. It means that there's no other options for these lines. If I have a rectangle over here, this is not fully constrained, and it means it can be dragged around. Inventor doesn't know or care how big it is. We don't want to do that. I can highlight it by dragging a rectangle, hitting the delete button on the keyboard. This is good. This is what we want. I'm going to hit finish sketch, zoom out, or I can hit F6 on my keyboard. And I have, I'm going to hold F4, a square floating in space. Oh my god, it's way over there now. Hit F6. Next button, extrude. If you uh, hover your mouse over anything, by the way, it kind of explains to you what it does. That's really useful. But extrude takes two-dimensional geometry, a sketch, and makes it thick. Exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to click that, and it chooses my square for me, because it's the only thing there to extrude. And it's extruding it one inch. I want to extrude it an eighth of an inch, 0.125. That's how thick the box is. And if you look at the webcam and you look at this piece here, looks like I made it. Cool. I'm going to go up here, upper left hand corner, to the save button. Notice it's saving in my folder. If it's not saving here, you have a problem. Don't try to fix it here. You've got to close out, start over, and get in the right project file. And I'm going to name this box side JW. There's another box side in here because I already did this for another video. If you see somebody else's files here, you are in the wrong project file. Start over. Okay, I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to repeat all the steps. Look at the webcam to make this blocking, okay? Now, this is 3 quarters of an inch by 3 quarters of an inch by 8 inches long. So I'm going to go to new part. This is just a little bit faster way to do it. Click on 2D sketch. Find my XY plane. I'm going to draw a rectangle starting here. Dimension it. That line's going to give me the height. Eight inches. Now, see I have a green line? It's because Inventor doesn't know how wide this thing is. It's not fully constrained. So I'm going to constrain the length of this line to 0.75. And there's my blocking. It's not a three-dimensional shape yet. If I go ahead and hit finish sketch, you'll see that it's just a flat thing floating in space. Hit F6. Go to extrude. And I want to extrude this 0.75. Hit OK. Make sure it looks like what I thought. This is square. Looks good. Hit save. I'm going to call this 8-inch blocking. Guys, please name your thing something smart. Don't call them dumb part, dumb part 2, stupid part. Ah, JK, 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 LJ. I've seen it all. You are all going to have to ask me for help at some point. If your files are named something that I don't understand, 
I'm going to make you rename them, which causes tons of problems for your project file. So please don't go there. Name them something that describes what the part is. Okay. I have my 8-inch blocking saved. I made my box sides. Go ahead and watch the next video to find out how to put them all together.